Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for another daily cryptocurrency market update where we aim to bring you all the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space. And also we look at the kind of broader economic landscape and try and work out where the cryptocurrency market is going. Now we've stated our view, took a um, very neutral position on the 1st of January that pivoted into a bullish one and had been accumulating crypto since the start of the year, ultimately in the expectations of that uh, the market is going high. You know, we're not buying because we think the market's going lower. We sold in 2022 for that exact reason and have now bought for um, opposite reasons. And we've, and we've covered that. Um, and this is another one of those daily market updates where I really don't even know where to start because there's just so much happening on a day to day basis within the crypto space. So what we're going to be doing, we have some very interesting news from JP Morgan talking about tokenization of everything. Where have we heard that before? Well, I think Larry Fink, I even think we gave a short of that yesterday um, on the channel. So I'm sure you can scroll from my channel and find that of Larry Fink talking about how everything is going to be tokenized. Everything, guys, is going to be ran on the blockchain. And blockchain right now is here. Now, it's very interesting because I've got lots that I can share with you. Um, we had another congressional hearing yesterday talking about how to identify these digital assets and what jurisdiction they come under. Guys, it is a massive win, not just this one, the stablecoin one, and the one, of course, where they grilled Gary Gensler for the entire space, as I've been in the space long enough to uh, come from a point where it was only but a dream that we'd get this kind of representation in Congress. Regulations are coming. In the US, you live in a dictatorship disguised as a democracy. Same here for us in the, in the UK. And I could go down that deep, dark rabbit hole and by the end of it convince you 100% because it is a fact that that is the case. I'm not going to do that on this video. I am maybe going to start doing some videos where it's just me talking about the camera and talking about some of these subjects. But they will not allow something that they don't control and that is decentralized. Many cryptos aren't actually decentralized whilst they claim to be that to replace their traditional financial system. What they are going to do is bring it under their jurisdiction. They're going to regulate it. They're going to tax it. And then they're going to allow it to thrive. And right now, the cryptocurrency market is still in its infancy. This is the equivalent of where crypto is today, looking at it in regards to or comparing it to the dot-com boom. Uh, sorry, not the dot-com boom, the PC revolution. No one would dream of using that today. That is probably actually a collector's item and quite expensive um, at this point. Uh, however, if you look at what we have today, we have a far more advanced phone computationally than the likes of this. This is where blockchain is going. Blockchain is becoming easier and easier. Um, to build and also uh, cheaper and cheaper um, as the space develops. And this is the progression of technology. And you are going to be using, just like JP Morgan saying here, um, crypto, uh, uh, blockchain, in the same way that right now we're communicating over the internet. You know, we drive to work, which is another revolution, the, the motoring revolution. Some of us take trains, which is the, the railroad revolution. And we are only here, guys. It's a very bright future for crypto um investors if you want to find out what cryptos i'm picking um as winners please do feel free to join the patreon and also we do share them on this channel so make sure you subscribe so i want to play this little clip of brian talking about what he sees blockchain as um and then we'll look at the price i've been very strict most people in the crypto space right now shouldn't be traders you should not be trying to time every single top and every single bottom Local, you, you want to do what we do, which is time the trends and look at the broader picture. So we want to be out here, in here. Okay, we, we messed up a little bit and got out here and in here. Um, but you'll make your money as an investor that way. People who try and time tops and bottoms, I promise you, you will mess up and it will cost you money. And this kind of whole, um, the best traders I know, that make pull millions of, uh, of dollars, pounds out of the market, they don't try um, or they couldn't even do that. And they make millions. Yet people have this idea that they can sell when they think it's at a, a high price and buy when they think it's at a low price. You end up with a situation like what we had recently. And I saw it firsthand. People saying, oh, I sold the top here, even though they probably sold somewhere down here or down here or down here. And then it went up and now they've probably got to buy in at a higher price. 
that will happen to you. It has happened to me. I'm not, I'm human being. I'm, I'm here really to prevent people from making the mistakes that I've done. Doesn't mean I'm, I'm smarter than anybody. It just means that I've been here for a while and made a lot of mistakes. I want to prevent you guys from doing exactly that. So let's play this clip of uh, Brian. Also some good news out of Robinhood. You know, it's getting easy and easy to buy crypto. That's a trend we're going to continue to see progress. Remember where we are, guys. We're here. So let's play this clip very quickly. A car or, or a home. And so when I read the Bitcoin white paper, I, I thought this might be an important breakthrough, something on the order of what we saw with the internet, a new global and decentralized system that could uh, make it easier for people to transmit value and, and update financial services globally. The next decision I had was, um, where do I want to start this company? Once, once I realized I wanted to start a company, and you know, I, I went to some early Bitcoin meetups in San Francisco and people were telling me, you, know, you shouldn't base it in the US, it's going to be too challenging. There's 50 state regulators and multiple federal regulators and you should start it in Hong Kong or Singapore. And um, there was other firms that were starting at that time that did that. But I made the choice at that moment to start the company in the US because I knew that even if it was more difficult, the US was a major market, there was respect for rule of law, um, the US was a financial hub, a technology hub. It was a place where I felt entrepreneurs could work in good faith with regulators to help define clear rules for new industries as they emerged. And so I was lucky enough to raise some venture capital money. You know, the prototype on my laptop nights and weekends um, turned into a small company and we went off to the races. You know, 11 years later, fast forward, um, this strategy of proactively working with regulators in, in cases where it really wasn't clear what we should do because it was a new industry, we tried to do the right thing in the absence of clarity and um, show, demonstrate good faith effort that would allow us to bring this technology in a safe and thoughtful way to hopefully a billion people someday. So here we are um, as a public company. I think we've made enormous. I don't want to go into the whole of it, but what he's trying to say here is that the SEC have sent them a Wells response. And what they're doing is just totally unfair. We've seen with the hearings, there was another one just yesterday that lots of people missed. I did post it on Twitter. So if you're not following me on Twitter, head over to at real all in crypto. Make sure it's spelled correctly. Like you've got um, here on the screen, you know, lots of scammers out there. Some scammers even have more followers than me, which I think is hilarious. Um, but the SEC are making things incredibly difficult. And these hearings have all been about trying to stop the hindrance of this asset class. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Brian decides to move elsewhere. Why wouldn't you? The, the FTX is outside the US, Binance is outside of the US, and for good reason. And the US are really hindering themselves. And it's, it's you know, it, 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 it's scandalous, really, what's um, going on with the US. I do want to talk about some macro stuff. Um, but I thought this was interesting. Tyrone Loban, head of banks, Onxi digital platform, uh, digital asset platform. So JP Morgan is moving towards with tokenization in spite of downturn in the cryptocurrency market. This came out yesterday, guys. JP Morgan Chase, the largest US bank in terms of assets, remains steadfast in a plan to tokenize traditional financial assets, largely undeterred uh, by the crypto bear market and regulatory uncertainty. The bank has proposed almost 700 billion in transactions in short term loans using its RNC bank digital platform. That is not far off, two thirds uh, and a bit the entire cryptocurrency market. A permissionless version of the Ethereum blockchain uh, where customers can trade tokens that denote value uh, ownership right to the US Treasury. So this is the way the entire world's going. Um, if you can't see what's going on here, you're a blind man, you know, or woman, depending on whether, who, you know, what, what gender you are listening to this. Um, yeah. Um, so this is where we are. Uh, Robin Hood gives users a new way to fund their web free wallets. You're going to see a progression of it becoming easier and easier to buy crypto. It's still rel rel relatively cumbersome, uh, in my opinion, uh, even from an exchange point of view and experience. Um, but it is going to become easier and easier. And we're seeing a real advancement in that. In regards to the crypto price, which is what I want to dive into. You know, you got to be careful. This is essentially what we're looking at. We've got a video coming out with a sniper. I think we'll release it today or tomorrow uh, of an interview we did. It's already on Patreon where we're looking at the kind of yin and, or not yin and yang, the, the, the flows of these markets. You want, as an investor, to call these tops and bottoms. 
and then ride it up. You don't want the stress, believe me. And most people aren't even equipped to do that. I'm not dissing anybody. I'm saying I know this. Unless you are a trader and you do this for a living, you've been it for a long time, and even the best traders that I know can't call every, every local top and bottom, and you will get that wrong and you'll end up like my friend who isn't, you know, when people say they've got a friend and actually it's them. In this case, it's not because I actually held Bitcoin uh, all throughout, well, from 2017, really, onwards. Um, but I had a friend that sold Bitcoin at 12K, hoping that it was going to come down because he thought he could do that and then had to watch it go all the way to 65. Don't be that guy or girl. You know, you want to ride this up and down if you can from a short side of thing, if you know what you're doing there, or just stay out of the market. Now we're trying to ride this up. We've got structure that takes a 35K. This is something that was highlighted by uh, Francis on his Twitter, if anyone wants to go check that out, where he's looking at maybe some sort of a rising wedge structure. You could get this. You could see that 35K target get run. And that would give you a nice three impulses. Um, the law of threes, guys. Three Threes play out all the time. And this would kind of coincide with telling Mango uh, and come back into Leisure Day. Even if we did that and we came down to 25K, that would have all the bulls, the bears saying they're right. Even though I've watched them get wrecked the entire, every single time we've sold off. And yesterday again. Now, I do think the market does look a little bit toppy here. These are just some scenarios. This could be the, 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 the sell in May. You know, it doesn't have to happen. You could do some 30, 30K right now, looking at apparent structure, immediate structure, which we've always said is going to be apparent. And, and significant is still acting as resistance. You need to get over it and you need to get above it. And this could send the market into full send. You could have this fake out situation where you do something like that. We will see. Um, but ultimately, crypto, in my opinion, you want to be long. That's as simple as it is. Altcoins are still, in my opinion, at great prices. Um, and that's really all we've got on the kind of price side um, of things. You know, we've covered this to death. We've looked at macro, we've looked at micro, we've looked at everything in between. Uh, and we've done it better than 99% of the channels out there. And you can go and fact check that with the videos. Uh, and I'm not saying that to be um, cocky. I'm saying that because I think that it's a real lack of uh, um, intelligence on YouTube. Or not a lack of intelligence. I think it's a real poor caliber of market analyzers um, and, and, and content creators in regards to the crypto space. This is something that I wanted to highlight. You know, um, we saw the debt ceiling get raised. We're gonna. We saw First Republic come out, and then I think cryptocurrency market and gold got a little bit of a bid, and the dollar got a little bit weak on the back end of, you know, are the Fed gonna have to do the same thing they did with Silicon Valley Bank, which is add to the balance sheet, which is a form of QE. QE is inevitable, which is why I kind of say you could almost long anything against the dollar, because we live in a system where if you up interest rates, that system just does not work. You need if if I lend you, if me and you are the only people in the system, and I lend you a hundred dollars. With a 1% interest rate, I need to, where are you going to get that $101 from to pay me back? You need to keep adding to it, adding to it, adding to it. And if you charge a higher interest rate, you need to add to it even more. It comes to this point where actually count, where interest rates will be counterintuitive to inflation. Let me say that again. Interest rates, which are put up um, to, to, to fight inflation, it's the only tool the Fed have, you know, all last year, main sentence for us that Jerome said was, we're bringing demand in line with supply. So we're going to kill demand, i.e. buy up in interest rates and making it harder for everyone by bringing, uh, it, um, um, making things more expensive, bringing demand in line with supply. Now, it's very interesting that in the UK, we had one of the Bank of England chiefs come out and say, Brits just need to accept that they're poorer. Why? Whose policies have led to that? The government is not your friend, ladies and gentlemen. I can promise you that and yes they do some things that do help the masses you know i'm a big believer in uh, healthcare services i just think there's a better way to do it and i'm very thankful for the ones that we have in the uk you know certainly if you look at it in regards to other countries but as somebody who's also been in that industry prior to becoming a trader and in, in, in crypto it is a mess and it's a mess because of the government involvement um, and I don't want to go down that deep, deep dark rabbit hole because I do think that healthcare should be something that, that, that people should get as a citizen of a country, certainly if they're paying taxes. But, um, you know, it, it, it's just a mess, everything that's going on. And, and, and the problem you've got now with interest rates is look at the money that the Fed now need to get to cover their current expenditures. 
Federal government current expenditures, interest repayments. Where'd they get that money from? You guys are the only source of the government's income or they print it. So it gets to this point where what they're doing becomes idiocracy. And you're already seeing the lights of the debt ceiling. So they're now issuing more debt. They're upping it by 1.1 trillion. I think it's set to go three over a couple of years or something. That's more debt devaluation. The entire currency system is based on debt. And this is why Bitcoin, this is why crypto, this is why gold, this is why anything outside of the system, and stay tuned for that video of Francis Hunt, guys, is valuable. Because, and this is the, the I'm not a Bitcoin maxi, but you can only but admire Bitcoin and say, wow, it opened Pandora's box. Because now, what it's really showing people is that the entire construct of society as we know it, in the UK, in the US, around the world, has been made up by a select few number of people and basically uh, doctrinized to um, and taught from a very early age to be the kind of almost religion of, not religion of the world, the kind of way that the world is. When in actual fact, it's not. Why is money valuable? Because somebody told you it was. And we've all been led to believe it. I know nothing different, but in our lifetimes, we're going to see a monetary change. I guarantee that. And crypto is going to have a massive part of it. Um, and really what I'm trying to say with, you know, you've been doc doctrinized is, is society as we know it. And it's why we have so much problems, which is all governmental, by the way. You know, they're the people who are essentially directing the country that are supposedly voted for. Um, they have steered things in a way where they've led you to believe the life that we currently live, everybody, you know, get up very early in the morning. I'm watching people rush around and get to work very tired eyed, you know, very, you know, probably sacrificing certain things so that they can go and do this. It's it's crazy that the, the thing that we're sacrificed so much for, which is money that we're all dependent on, um, is totally manipulated and, and, and uh, controlled by um, people who aren't elected. And, and even I would argue that actually, certainly when you look at Governments and such like that, it, it, it's it's a very thin line between a dictatorship and a um, a um, uh, democracy. So it's very interesting all that's going on right now. I think this is ultimately going to fuel Bitcoin. We're long and strong. Whatever you choose to do is entirely your opinion. Uh, and, and genuinely, if you're a bear right now, I wish you the best of luck. Um, and if you're a bull, I also wish you the best of luck. I want people to make money in this market. And this is coming from a, a place of somebody who's lost money in the market in the early days. A lot of money. I paid my dues. And he's now very focused and dedicated to helping people make money. And when I say don't try and time every top and bottom in the, lo in the local ones, I'm saying that because I've learned that from experience. But that is all I've got for you in this video, guys. Big things coming. You know, it's, it's, a, it's massive that we're seeing all this come through Congress. I think in the next 12 months, you're going to have a lot more clarity on regu regulations. In the UK, they plan on having it all fully set out by then. Um, and ultimately, this takes crypto from $1 trillion to the multi-trillions. And you can see just how much JP Morgan are already doing. $700 billion in transactions in short-term loans. That's one bank. Guys, this industry hasn't even started the journey that it's on. Remember, we are, and I'll just let this load up here. All I've got for you guys, if you enjoyed the content, like, so I appreciate it, so to comment. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks all for watching. See you in the next.